Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. It's Friday. I'm going to call it Fragrance Friday because I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about the beauty you see in front of you, which is this year's limited edition version of Chanel Number no. 5 in the glamorous all red bottle. I think it will make a beautiful present for yourself or a loved one. And so I thought it might be worth showing it, although of course you can't smell it. There won't be many of you out there who don't know what Chanel Number no. 5 smells like. It's probably the, well I think without doubt, it is the most famous perfume in the world at the moment. It's been produced continuously by Chanel since Coco Chanel first uh, launched it in the 1920s, I can't remember the exact year, mid-1920s I think, as her first perfume. She used a very famous perfumier from, um, called Ernest Beau, I don't know where he was from, I'm guessing with that name he was French, but he was famous for working with the Russian royal family at that time and he had been experimenting with the use of aldehydes in perfume, which was a then revolutionary concept in perfume production. Perfumes were produced using natural oils and derivatives up till that point in alcohol or not. Aldehydes were produced in the laboratory, they're organical compounds, and they essentially boost uh, the other fragrances and often add a kind of natural, although it's not natural, it's produced in the laboratory, fragrance note like oceanic, um, snow, th those kinds of concepts of fragrances that we use because we all know that snow doesn't actually smell of anything. Uh, ocean of itself doesn't smell of anything and uh, the aldehydes are said to represent sometimes those sorts of fragrances but they're also boosters and they since the time of Ernest Beau have been used very heavily in Chanel fragrances. In fact Chanel number no. 5 was not the first commercially produced fragrance to use aldehydes, it was another Ernest Beau creation I believe from what I've read for the then perfume house Ubigon uh, called Quelque Fleur. So <clears throat> Ernest Beau produced a number of potential fragrances for Ch uh, Coco Chanel to choose from and uh, legend has it that she chose the one from the sample number five. Other legends say that it was called number five because n number five was a lucky or superstitious number for Gabrielle Chanel. Who knows, but it became the first of the Chanel fragrances. There are other fragrances using numbers still today. I'm very fond of number 22, which I think is quite similar to Chanel, I actually, uh, to number five. I actually slightly prefer it. I think it's a kind of grown up version of number five. And there's certainly number 18. Others have been produced over the years. So a bit of a potted history there, as I say, Number five has gone on since then, very heavily advertised, famously by Marilyn Monroe, I think for no money at all. She said in the 1950s that the only thing she wore to go to bed was a few drops of Chanel number no. five. Can you imagine what she would now be paid uh, if she was willing to say that on her Instagram or her YouTube channel? But advertising was very different in those days and poor old Marilyn as usual didn't got shortchanged for the value she gave to others but I think she's probably the most famous wearer of number five. So Chanel have always been very good at re-promoting and re-promoting this fragrance and repackaging it, reimagining it. The formula has certainly changed over the years. A number of the ingredients that were used in the original number five it would be illegal to use now like oil of civet Many people say that the last great classic formulations of number five were back in the early 80s and aficionados fight to try and buy vintage versions on eBay dating back to then. I certainly had one until quite recently that I scored a few years ago and it does smell very different from the current formulation. 
uh, although I wasn't quite sure if the slightly musky smell of mine was due to age rather than the actual formulation. But it's still a glorious and very recognisable fragrance that you'll all be familiar with. There is a reformulation, there have been several reformulations in recent years. My favourite's actually Eau Premiere, but the other one that you can buy in this red version is Low, which was, I think, produced last year. It's a much lighter version of number five, which opens with a very citrus top note. I do like it. I don't, I don't think I would buy it again when I've got through my whacking grape bottle it doesn't have a very good last on me and the citrus opening note which I really like actually dries down on me very very quickly indeed and then I've just got a very light number five which smells almost like a counterfeit number five to me in that it's not it hasn't got the strength of the real number five so I personally am not a huge fan of low it's it's wearable but I don't love it. But I can see that a lot of people who find the classic number five is a little overdone and old fashioned. I've heard it described. I've heard it described as old lady. I don't think it is. It's, you know, it's a very floral, powerful fragrance. And if you like floral mixes that have this aldehyde boost, you know, what's not to love about Chanel? But it was easy for me to choose that I was going to go for the classic formulation rather than low. It's Eau de Parfum, which has a good last. I've been wearing this on and off again since I bought it. Chanel Number no. 5 is always in my wardrobe. It's not my favourite Chanel fragrance anymore and it's not my favourite fragrance. But I do like it and I was very happy to have it again in my collection just to get this lovely red bottle. So there's a few meandering thoughts about Chanel Number no. 5 generally. This is outrageously priced to get a pretty bottle, but that's what the marketing is all about with Chanel and indeed other luxury houses these days. I do think this is a beautifully produced bottle. If I had to be critical, the actual packaging is perhaps a bit flimsy when there's such an upmarking for this particular edition. But the actual bottle itself is gloriously produced, uh, feels expensive, looks expensive. So if you were looking to treat yourself or a loved one who loves number five, I think this is a glorious option. And although the stocks appear to be very good at the moment, it's not going to be around forever. And then it will be a classic packaging, at least over the years. So well worth having a look at if you are a Chanel fan. So until next time, which I hope will be quite soon, I do just want to put you on notice that I'm hoping to upload daily in December up till the 25th, uh, my version of Vlogmas, which will simply be to look at a cosmetic goodie every day in December from the Liberty Advent calendar, which I have on hand and we'll be showing you in due course. So that's my cunning plan. And until then, I have got quite a few <laughs> videos that I want to film and show you various items from the holiday collections that I still haven't showed and other cosmetics that I've been trialing. So let's see how we go with that. But until next time, bye for now.